about here is a hard homework problem based on the Gauss's Law homework that you've seen so far and have been trying to solve, hopefully solving most of it. What I have is an insulated sphere that's charged with minus 33 microcoulombs and that has a radius P of 7.8 centimeters. Then it's surrounded by another spherical shell and that one turns out to be a conducting shell, has an inner radius of 15 centimeters, thickness of 6.9 centimeters. And so the question is, what is the electric field on the inside of the insulated shell? What is it in between the two spherical surfaces? And then what's the E field inside of the shell itself? And then finally, what is the electric field on the exterior of our spherical conducting shell? And so we have to go ahead and use Gauss's law, which is written up here. And we are need, gonna need the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, the area. The charge density, uh, volume charge density, rho, which is Q contained by that spherical uh, insulated sphere, and divided by its volume. Uh, I'll throw it on the surface charge density as well, since that's a common equation that's needed. And then we're going to also take advantage of a trick where we can figure out what the electric field is by treating it like a point charge, and that's given by kq over r squared. And then finally, the charge inside, Qn, is going to be dependent upon our Gaussian sphere that we choose. And so we take uh, charge density, uh, volume charge density, multiplied by the volume of that Gaussian surface that we're going to be using. So our Gaussian surface ends up being a sphere because we have a spherical distribution. Uh, a cube or a cylinder wouldn't do us any good. And so the goal is to take Gauss's law, make the electric field constant, and by picking a Gaussian sphere and putting it the, in the same uh, location or concentric with the uh, insulated sphere, we end up getting the electric field to be constant if we're along that, and that's given by uh, field lines pointing directly in towards the very center because it is a negatively charged sphere. If it was positive, it would be pointing outwardly. And then we also note that the area vector, which always points outside or towards the exterior of any Gaussian surface, in this case points radially away. So that lets us bring the electric field to the outside, and that leaves us with negative e, dot, e integral of dA because our dot product is taken care of by the area vector pointing out, the E field pointing in, cosine of 180 is negative 1. So the integral of dA is simply dA, so we get negative EA of the sphere, and that happens to be the Gaussian sphere now that we're going to be concerned about, and again, that's going to be equal to the charge inside of that Gaussian sphere divided by E0. So we go ahead and put in the equation for the area of our Gaussian surface, and that's just 4 pi F squared, since F is the radius of the Gaussian surface that we've highlighted here in red and set that equal to Qn divided by E0. So what is the Q inside? That just happens to be given by our equation here that says Q inside is given by that charge density times the volume of our sphere that's containing the charge. And so what do we do for that then? We just go ahead and we take our total charge Q, as I did over here, divided by the volume of our insulated sphere. And so there's big Q to represent the total charge and 4 thirds pi p cubed for the total volume of the insulated sphere and multiply that by the volume that's inside of our insulated sphere that we're trying to figure the uh, electric field at that point. And so we go ahead and plug in the volume of our sphere that we're using for a Gaussian surface and that's 4 thirds pi f cubed and then we're dividing that by 4 thirds pi p cubed and so the 4 thirds pi and 4 thirds pi cancel out and the net result is q f cubed over e naught p cubed and so this f cubed p cubed is just a fraction of the charge that's contained on the surface that we happen to choose happen to choose we could have made it any radius that we wanted to but i just make it a variable f so that lets us make f very small or very big up to the point where it gets to p which is the uh, radius of our insulated sphere. And so after all that's done, we can rewrite everything then as negative e 4 pi f squared is going to be equal to q f cubed divided by e naught p cubed. And so f squared and f cubed are going to cancel some factors out. 
So the net result is our electric field is negative Q F divided by 4 pi E naught P cubed. So P again is the radius of our insulating sphere. F is where we are away from the very center of that, and that's the location we're trying to find the electric field at. And so we can go ahead and plug in some of the numbers, the 33 microcoulombs. We have a negative and a negative, so the total results in a positive number. And so 6.25 times 10 to the 8th newtons per coulomb, and times F again, the variable that's going to depict where we're looking for the electric field within that insulated sphere. And we also add our direction by saying it's going to be inward, meaning the electric field has to point inward because it's negatively charged. All right, so that takes care of what's happening on the inside. And then now we move to the outside, and we find out that when we move to the outside, now we use our rule that when we're on the outside of an, an infinite wire or an infinite conductor, uh, a cylinder, or uh, in, on the exterior of any spherical distribution, such as mass, or in this case, charge, we can assume that it acts like it's all located at, at the central uh, origin of that sphere. And so that is where we use our equation here for E equals KQ over R squared. There's a 4 pi E naught version of that as well, but I like to keep it simple. So we can just say that E or greater than P, but we're less than T, meaning we're between the two spheres, is going to be just given by E equals for uh, kq over, in this case, our f squared, how far we are located outside of that uh, inner insulated sphere. And so that ends up being pretty simple. And again, the, this, the direction is inward. So that gives us direction. And so that solves the electric field anywhere inside of here. We treat everything here like a point charge. So then all, all that matters is our distance away from that origin. Now when we're trying to look at the electric field in between the two walls of our conducting shell, what happens is that when we have some negative charge in here, what does that negative charge do to this shell that's then thrown around the outside of it? Well, it turns out that the electrons in here, the excess electrons here, will repel the electrons on the interior surface of this shell and push them to the outside so that we end up getting a negative charge accumulation on the outside. And so we have a bunch of electric electrons on the outside surface. And that leaves a net positive charge on the interior surface. And so if we wanted to, we could figure out the charge density as well. I'm not asking to do that in this problem. But the motion results in, from the fact that we in, generate an electric field pointing in. The electrons move in the opposite direction of the electric field inside of the conductor so that the field from the uh, interior insulated sphere and that generated by the separation of charge to the surfaces on the uh, surrounding a little uh, spherical shell cancel any electric field on the inside. So that's another golden rule to keep in mind, saying that E inside conductors is always, always zero for electrostatic problems that we're concentrating on here. So that ends up being a pretty easy question to answer. And then the finally, when we look at what ha what's happening on the very exterior, when we move our F all the way out here, what happens in this case? We can do the same thing again. We can assume that since we're on the exterior, we assume that all of the charge is concentrated at the very center. And so the result is that when we're on the very outside, then we get the same thing once again, where this equation gets used again. And we say on the outside, the electric field is kq over f squared once again. And our hat negative is another way of representing that direction. Saying the unit vector pointing outwards in, in uh, spherical coordinates 
the direction then would be negative r hat, meaning in the opposite direction. But again, a unit vector being a magnitude of one, and it only indicates direction. So that's how you solve a problem.